Hello, FPL managers. Welcome to the FPL Optimize podcast. This is episode number 55, in which we will review game week three and look ahead to game week four. I am Boss, the casual manager, and my co host is Sir Top, the data scientist. This is the podcast in which we combine analytics with the good old eye test. Data or grass or data and grass? That's the question. Game week three brought a few surprises again. Gabriel still didn't play, or should I say Gabriel? I'm not sure. My friend <laughs> no, will tell know. me <laughs> he was making jokes about it last time. But anyway, he still didn't play. Uh, Foden and Akanji didn't start. Saka was back on penalties. And Verbrugge replaced Steele in the Brighton goal. Proving again that planning in FPL isn't easy and we should always be ready to deal with some curveballs. Sir Top, the score was 1-1 in our head-to-head competition. How did your team do this week? Uh, I finished with 55 points. Again, it is above average, so I had a green arrow, but I mean, it is less than uh, I was hoping for. I was hoping for a much better game, to be honest. Okay. Um, so, Gabriel, I started in the lineup. Uh, it got it, it got auto subbed with uh, S2P Nan. Uh, right. It brought me on one point. Yeah. Um, I think like overall it wasn't a bad game week, but um, yeah. I mean, so my differential players like Richarlison or um, like Pickford in the mini league uh, or Diaz, they all blanked, and that actually didn't help me much. I mean. Diaz was going to get a clean sheet and it was going to actually put me in a much better rank. But, right. you know, City always loses clean sheet when I have a defender from them. So it's classic. How yeah. was your game week? Yeah, just a little bit better. 58. So uh, that makes the score 2-1 for me. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had a good start on Friday because I went for three Chelsea players in my team. Uh, however, however, I did regret going for Di Sassi uh, over Gusto, as you can mm. imagine. Uh, Gusto with the two assists. Uh, but still, I had the clean sheet for Di Sassi and also for uh, Chilwell. Uh, then on Saturday, I was quite happy with the United performance, with both Bruno and Rashford mm. uh, scoring points. Even though uh, I did get a little bit scared when they were 2-0 behind. Um, <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was a difficult start. And also, I had zero points in that game for Onana. So that's uh, Onana has been a bit disappointing uh, in game week two and game week three. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, for the rest, I was quite happy with Saka with eight points uh, back on the penalties, at least for that game. So that was good. Martinelli only returned two, unfortunately. Uh, the Brighton guys, Estupinen and uh, Mitoma, just gave me gave me two points each. But that was a bit of a strange game. I don't know if you watched it, but Brighton had most of the ball. They, sc- they could have scored a few goals easily. Uh, but credits to West Ham. They they had a good strategy. And uh, yeah, I feel like at some point, all of us will probably have uh, one or two hammers uh, in our team. So that's that's definitely a team to, to keep an eye on. They made a few good signings uh, in the transfer window. Um but yeah, overall quite happy, especially also with my transfers. I took Jackson instead of Joe Pedro. So that was a good decision for that game week. And also Di Sassi instead of Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Uh, my game week rank was 1 million. Um, and it was quite a bit higher like on Sunday evening before the auto sub points came in. So yeah. I feel like I was a little bit unlucky with that because... I did pick the right eleven. <laughs> I, did, I didn't need, uh, yeah, I didn't need the bench player, but you know, that's that's how it goes. That's true. And what also helped me was uh, City losing a clean sheet because I think a lot of people either have a defender or have Ederson. So City losing the clean sheet was a good thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I cannot complain too much. Overall, a decent game week and hoping that I can continue that trend in game week four. So, yeah, let's dive into the data, starting with the model performances. Uh, Is there anything new you want to talk about? Yeah, so we have used three game weeks of data now. Um, So I think the order is roughly the same, but uh, in terms of 
projection model accuracy, FPL review is still number one uh, in terms right. of outcome prediction. Uh, Fantasy yeah. Football Hub in second place, Fantasy Football Scott in third place, uh, Mikhail Tokwam's transfer algorithm in fourth, Fantasy Football Fix is in fifth place, and then we have Draft Hound and FPL team. Um, yeah. So one thing that I noticed this game week was def- defender projections were a little bit more inaccurate this game week. And I mean, this inaccuracy obviously comes from the fact that, you know, sometimes unexpected things happen. So it's not mm. entirely model's fault. I mean, there's variance in football, as we know. Sure. But yeah. <clears throat> last game week, we were talking about how midfielder projections were you know, inaccurate or far away from the projections. And this game yeah. week, is the de- it was defenders. Um, and in terms of underlying or expected data, uh, the most accurate model is Fantasy Football Hub. And then we yeah. have Mikael Tokwam in the second place, and then FBR Review in the third place, and then Scott, F- uh, Fantasy Football Scott, Draft Hound, Fantasy Football Fix, and FBL Team uh, okay. is the order. Yeah. And so I think most of the ranks are roughly the same, uh, but we will probably see them converging somewhere in a few game weeks of time. Uh, okay. But yeah, anything you want to ask or? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just I was wondering. I think I know the answer, but just to check. So the data is now the, the accumulated data, right? From game week. That's one correct. Two, three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Game week one okay. to three. Yeah. Okay. And again, this. No, no, Analysis is done by uh, Neil Rankin, ZA, yeah. on Twitter. Okay. No, you know, to be honest, it doesn't help me much because uh, I don't <laughs> use the data. <laughs> but I can, I can imagine, uh, like for you, and I think many people listening who follow these models, it is quite interesting to uh, to now be able to see how the models are performing. Yeah. I mean, this season, it is a little bit interesting. We know that FBR Review is one of the best models out there. And yeah. also Mikael Tokwam, they spend a lot of time uh, on their models. Um, I was actually a little bit surprised that Fantasy Football Hub and Fantasy Football Scott are doing better than last season, I should say. Uh, and I okay. actually asked both of them. Uh, I reached out to um, the people who maintain their models. And they both said they had an update over the summer. And okay. so they, they are kind of paying attention to how accurate their models now. So I think it is yeah. a good thing that we are bringing this topic a lot nowadays so that yeah, we definitely. are kind of forcing these, you know, <laughs> the websites to, you know, pay attention to their models. And it yeah. it's helping the analytics players eventually because as yeah, the models cool. get, you know, more accurate, uh, yeah. we should be able to get better ranks, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were paying attention to their models anyway, but it's good that we, uh, <laughs> we, we have some numbers now to look at uh, the performance of the different models. So thanks for uh, compiling that. All right. Um, so yeah, the next chart we look at, same to last week's, is the team strengths for the next upcoming game weeks. And we split it by attack and defense. And as explained in previous episodes, we could look at this as a kind of uh, game um, fixture ticker yes. um, to, to see, you know, which teams we should potentially uh, invest in. So how does it look like for this week? So for this week, actually, we have two games uh, that made it to the top 10 percentile. The first game is Manchester City playing against Fulham uh, this game right. week. That game is both good defensively and offensively. So the defensive average, like point average, is 4.7. And for offensive players, it is 5.8. For offense players, it is 5.8. And the second game, you know, second favorable game, uh, this game week is Chelsea is playing against Nottingham Forest. And it is especially um, a favorable fixture defensively. Uh, 4.5 even though their offense uh, average point is higher 4.6 it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a you know it is a better obviously it's a good fixture offense in terms of um, midfielders and forwards obviously there's no question about that but there are kind of better games like for example they were playing against Aston Villa has 5.0 point average for offense players 
But yeah, right. a, mainly City against Fulham and Chelsea against Nottingham Forest yeah. are the games um, that made it to the you know that top ten percent layer. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe just to comment on that, I think, um, yeah, I'm hoping that indeed Chelsea can keep a clean sheet. I have two defenders. I think maybe more people will be invested in the Chelsea defense now, especially also with, with Gusto. But uh, Nottingham have been quite strong, huh? especially uh, Awuniji. He has been scoring uh, goals in consecutive game weeks. So, I, you know, it could be a bit tricky to keep the clean sheet there. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's wait and see. <laughs> Yeah, looks like Manchester City has a higher chance yeah. of getting a clean sheet, but um, yeah. Chelsea yeah, still yeah. looks favorable in general. Yeah, yeah, of course. Never know. Of course. So when we usually share this fixture ticker, when we show the top 10 teams, you, you, you usually don't see any bad fixtures uh, for, for the horizon. Right. Um, but you might have noticed here that uh, Brentford playing against uh, Newcastle game week five is week actually five. defensively a really bad fixture. Um, hmm. So two point four average. So I think models think that they will certainly concede. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, it's far in the future now, but Brighton playing against Manchester City in game week nine is another, yeah. you know, red colored. So I want to also comment on one thing. So you brought a Chelsea defender. So well. Hopefully you can, <laughs> they can keep a clean shot so you can get points. But yeah. um, I opted for a city defender because I right. mean, they have more good fixtures in the horizon. So they, they will yeah. play against Nottingham Forest in game week six and then Wolves against game week seven. So yeah. hopefully it will be a longer term hold for me. And right. I'm hoping that you will be forced to make a transfer soon yeah uh, so that i can yeah. get the upper hand in our friendly competition yeah but as as mentioned last week i think that was the plan anyway yeah, i, I yeah. brought in distance just for the two game weeks and my plan is still to move then in game week five to uh ideally trippier in newcastle because newcastle will start uh a favorable run of fixtures at least yeah. let's hope so but you know city as always they are very solid, uh, you know, it's just a bit of rotation risk there. Um, yeah. yeah, I I think whenever you make a long-term decision, you're kind of hoping that, you know, more things will change uh, in the short term so that other yeah. people who schedule transfers will be forced to use their transfer for something else. Like it could sure. be something like one of your lineup players suddenly getting rotated and then yeah. so... Instead of doing that Chelsea to Newcastle defender switch, you yeah. would say, okay, I mean, I, I can manage for one or two more game weeks with the Chelsea defender. This guy is more right. urgent for me to replace. I mean, yeah, yeah we will talk about that. No, that can always but... happen. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it happens. And I think, uh, no, no, you're right. And I think, you know, Chelsea also in game week five, they play against Bournemouth. So, you know, it wouldn't be a big issue to keep the yeah. defenders for that. Uh, but indeed, I suddenly had two uh, yellow flags in my team. I have uh, Botman, who uh, apparently picked up an injury, but mm. I guess it won't be too bad. And I have uh, Bayer, who was my 4 million defender. I mean, anyway, I was not planning to use him, mm -hmm. but he's also out, it seems. So, uh, yeah, to your point, I mean, injuries can always happen. And yeah. uh, <laughs> the, But, you know, I'm uh, at the same time, I do have a plan and... But you, yeah, you need to stay flexible, of course. Yeah, yeah. certainly. But just looking at the ticker again, I think, you know, it's useful again to maybe mention the, the top teams. So mm -hmm. the top teams with most favorable fixtures. So number one is City on the chart. Mm -hmm. Number two is Liverpool. So that's, again, interesting because many of us don't have Liverpool players. Uh, then number three is Newcastle. And as mentioned, their fixtures get more favorable as of game week five. And then number four is Arsenal, and number five is Tottenham. So that's a yeah. bit, uh, the top five in mm -hmm. this chart. And here, I think it's worth mentioning again once more that Newcastle will start getting their good fixtures starting with game week five uh, against Brentford, and then Sheffield United, Burnley, uh, West Ham is not the you know worst, and no. then Crystal Palace. So defensively, all good fixtures. 
Um, so the, again, yeah. the problem with Ch- Liverpool here, even though they are second best, is yeah. so they have like two good games, and then they are playing against Tottenham, and then Brighton, and then Everton. Yeah. So it's like good, good, you know, average or below average for two game weeks. And yeah. I mean, obviously, their players are expensive, but the fact, but the reason why Liverpool in the second place here, offensively, they uh, they have good projections. I mean, it is over the horizon. It is higher than like the likes like uh, Newcastle or Arsenal or Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, like their offense average is five point zero over the six game week horizon, and the closest one is Arsenal with four point eight. I mean, the on yeah. on the better team is Manchester City, obviously with five point two, but that's yeah. expected. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Liverpool also there, there's the rotation is a bit the, the issue. Right? We had yeah. uh, Diogo Jota who, who started the first two games and then suddenly third game, uh, Gagbo was number nine and Jota was on the bench. So yeah, that can happen. Cool. I think we need to definitely keep an eye on Darwin Nunez. You know, he scored two great goals. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe this means that from now on, you know, he, he, he has some confidence back and he might be scoring more goals. And uh, yeah, Salah has been returning points as well, but it's just that uh, he's quite expensive for what you get back from him. And I think there was still some uh, risk that he might leave to to Saudi Arabia. So yeah, could be sure. an exciting end of the the transfer window. Definitely yeah. need to keep an eye on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or maybe a last thing to mention here on this chart, because I yeah. think on that, on, in general, uh, probably the model looks at West Ham as a favorable fixture, probably, you know, based on, on last season also as well, where West Ham didn't do well. But we've seen now in the first three game weeks that West Ham made a good start and they also made some really good signings. So I think that that could be a team to, to monitor because, you know, it might not be uh, an easy fixture this season. Yeah, maybe. And... <clears throat> Last time when we were talking about the fixture ticker, talked about you wearing a Chelsea t-shirt, a Chelsea jersey. Yeah. So right. Which jersey are you wearing this week? Yeah, because last last week you were asking me like which team I support, and and this is actually <laughs> my my hometown team. It's called MVV Maastricht. A lot of people might not know it. They play second division in in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. But when I was growing up, actually they were playing in, in in the top league. So you know, I had a season ticket when they were playing against Ajax and Feyenoord and the big teams. So, and this was the shirt they were wearing at that time. Um, and and yeah, that that's basically the only team I really support. Like, you know, if, if you ask me, like, when can you get emotionally if a team wins or loses? And <laughs> this is the only team where I can really, where I will look at the score and, and I will either feel very happy or I will feel sad. Um, so, yeah, I was wearing the shirt today also because I'm going to their home game on Friday. Oh, awesome. uh, So, yeah, could be a good moment to use, uh, to, to wear the shirt, I thought. So, yeah. Is, is it a blank <laughs> jersey or do you have a number or? Name behind. this is again a number four, same like last week. Last oh, week okay. it was four, uh, from uh Gullet and and this was uh yeah a central defender back in the days which uh which which I liked, let's say. Okay. <laughs> so you like defenders, but you when you play you you play as midfielder, right? Yeah, I'm more of a midfielder, yes. Yes. Number but 10. you know, that's a complete uh, different level. We shouldn't talk about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, no, I do enjoy playing. I'm still uh, playing in the veterans team, so that's uh that, that's still a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But let's go on with this uh fixture ticker and let's look at the bottom half of it. Yeah, bottom half. Um we have Sheffield United uh, in this hall of shame, <laughs> or I should say the bad, <laughs> bad teams. Um, yeah. We have Burnley in the second place and then Luton in the third place. Um, so, yeah. but for this game week, the worst fixtures are Nottingham Forest, Forest playing against Chelsea defensively. Yeah. It's a bad fixture. And Fulham play, playing against Manchester City, just the, you know, the reverse again, the defensively and offensively, it's a bad fixture. Yeah. Um, However, again, here, for example, West Ham United is, even though they have, well, they have a good game, they are playing against Luton this game week, and then they yeah. play against Manchester City the following week, yeah. and then Liverpool. So, th- yeah. I mean, two bad fixtures, but then they play against Sheffield United, and that fixture is actually marked with the gold bar, meaning that defensively is one of the best fixtures right. we have. So. Yeah. 
But then they play against Newcastle. So even though like West Ham, as you mentioned, is promising, they have one good, two you know, bad fixtures, and then another a really good one. So, I mean, it's always tricky to have players from such teams. You need to have a good right. rotation plan in mind. Yeah. No, no, but it's a good point because I think there were some people considering, for example, Bowen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they won last week against Brighton. Uh, Bowen scored a goal. He did well. And now they face Luton. So it looks like an interesting fixture. But indeed, you know, if you look a bit further uh, ahead, then you will see that they will play against City and Liverpool next. So that's something to to keep in mind. Yeah. And I think the Luton fixture is also an interesting maybe to to just be patient and see how that will go because it's the first home game for Luton. Uh, it might not be something that you know the Premier League league, league teams are used to uh, a smaller venue. Um, so yeah, let let's see how West Ham will do there. There it could be mm-hmm. you know I think we can expect Bowen and others to do well, but. Uh, Maybe a wait and see could be a better approach. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that. Very useful, this uh, fixture ticker. And um, next up, let's look also again on a player level, whether we see any changes there in expected points. Yeah, certainly. So um, Chase is on vacation <laughs> this week. So All he right. notified me and then I decided to generate this table myself this time, giving it a try. I mean, it's, it was difficult, <laughs> to to All say right. the least. I mean, I spent like an hour in trying oh, to okay. play something similar. Um, yeah. Again, this is uh, this is our part where we talk about who is hot and who is not. And yeah. uh, in the first rank, we have Fabio Silva uh, from Wolves. Yeah. With, for the next yeah. six, six game weeks, his expected value increased around 6.8. Um, and... In the second rank, we have Matip. Obviously, Van Dijk got the red card, so yeah. uh, he he got minutes. He will receive yeah. more um, uh, play time. Uh, yeah. That's why expected value-wise, he went up around 6.84. And okay. so, well, <laughs> as you mentioned, like we sometimes butcher names, so I, I hope I'm not butchering, but brand, wait... Brent Wait, yeah, at Everton. Everton. He was uh, starting in their lineup last week, so probably mm-hmm. that boosted his, his minutes expectations now. Mm-hmm. 6.6 mm-hmm. is actually very decent. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think these are, I mean, oh, and also, yeah, Archer, obviously. <laughs> he's in the ninth place, but he's driving oh, okay. for lots of people, I, I think. Uh, his expected yeah. value went up around 4.2. Uh, again, he, he wasn't supposed to get minutes, but now he will. So uh, Yeah, and I think the team here team. on the chart, it still says Aston Villa, but he moved, right? He's now, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. he's at Sheffield. So that's probably where, why the model changed yeah, it. Yeah. And he, the minutes went up. Yeah, and an interesting one is maybe number five, Marshall at Man United. Uh, he started on the number nine position in the last game which was a good thing, especially also for Rashford, because he could move to the left. But uh, United, yeah, they bought uh, Hoylund. So, you know, at, at one point we can expect him to come in. So that's maybe a bit of risk uh, if you if you, if you you consider Marshall. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So these are the hot players. So um, who are the cold ones? Cold ones. Uh, we have Mope from Everton in the top place here he lost okay. around 6.2 expected value and then even though he received a red card Van Dijk is the second place <laughs> he lost 5.8 I mean as you yeah. as you can see he mainly lost expected value for the next three games yeah. um, but for game week 7, 8, 9 is uh, just 0 yeah um, Keen from Everton lost 5.13 expected value, mainly for this game week. Um, and then, as you mentioned, Steele lost his minutes now that he didn't yeah. uh, start. And then we have Johnston, fifth place, Tete from Fulham, Vitinho from Burnley, Senesi from Bournemouth, Garnacho from Manchester United, and Bailey from Aston Villa. Um, okay. These are the players who lost their expected value the most. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Steel is an interesting one. I'm not sure how much he was owned. I can quickly check what it is now, but I think he was quite popular. Well, it's only 5% now. So I think maybe it was a bit higher before, but mm -hmm. this was kind of expected, right? Brighton, they bought Fabrugge as a young goalkeeper, and it was expected that at some point he would come in. But I don't think we thought that, that this was already this would already happen in game week three. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. it seems like Steele lost... Uh, his, his place and we have Fabrugge now in, in the Brighton goal. Okay, thank you. Very useful charts. This can help us again when we make our transfer decisions. Uh, I can add a few eye test observations and feel free to, to add your comments. I don't know if you saw many games uh, this weekend. Did, did you see a few? I, I checked highlights actually. I checked highlights okay. of most games, I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I started with Chelsea because that was the Friday game and, uh, you know, they had quite a comfortable win, even though uh, it was Luton. So, uh, you know, I also heard that, <laughs> but they said it in another podcast, probably every week we will say now, you know, it was only Luton. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, still early to make that conclusion, but at least in the, in the Chelsea game, you know, it looked like they were a bit light for the Premier League, especially against teams like like Chelsea. Yeah, Sterling was the main man. We did mention him last week, but I, I, I think I added to it, uh, do we dare to go there? Well, I didn't. <laughs> Some people did, and those people got rewarded. You know, he looked good, and uh, yeah, he scored a really good goal, uh, the first one, and uh, also the second one was also good. So yeah, kudos to the people who, who went for Sterling. Um, and yeah, I think what makes it difficult this week and probably for the rest of the season is to decide which midfielders we want to own in, in FPL this year right? because we have so many options. Uh, Sterling is now another one to consider mm -hmm. um, and, and probably we'll come back on it later because I think for the transfer decisions this week probably a lot of people are looking at midfielders. Uh, also Madison of course uh, in, 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 in good form. Uh, the United guys who delivered the points. So yeah. That will be a difficult decision, I think, the, the midfielders. But yeah, let's get back to Chelsea. Uh, Gusto looked also really good, um, even though, you know, maybe also a little bit lucky. He only had two crosses and both of the crosses went in. So uh, that was like 100% score. But uh, yeah, it, it's good for the people that, that went for him. Keep in mind, though, that it does look like James will not be out for too long. So at some point, Gusto might lose his, uh, his place again. And then in the attack, Jackson scored a goal. So that's good for us owners. I think overall, he looked quite dangerous, even though uh, his first touch is, is not the best. But, you know, he's, he's, he has a lot of energy and, uh, yeah, he goes for goals. Uh, he goes for goals quite fast. So I think he will be, uh, yeah, he will be dangerous. One to keep for now. Then uh, the other one, the other team to mention, uh, Spurs. Comfortable win against Bournemouth. Uh, they look reliable in defense. It's good to see that uh, my Dutch uh, friend uh, Van de Ven is doing well. To be honest, I didn't know him that well, but uh, he's uh, he's doing well there at Spurs, so that's good. And there's another cheap wing back also for Spurs, Udogi, and he got 12 points. So yeah, also well done. Um, so next to Madison, who was brilliant again, I think Udogi is probably. Uh, the, the other one people will look at uh, for Spurs. But on the other hand, Son and Richarlison uh, have been disappointing so far. So uh, if you own them, that could be, you know, you could consider selling them, I think. Then uh, Arsenal, they went behind against Fulham, which was a bit surprising. Uh, Gabriel didn't start again, so I suppose we can expect him to leave the club. But uh, the, the deadline of the transfer market is coming up pretty soon. Keep an eye on that. Saka took a penalty, so that was also interesting. <laughs> uh, last well, week it was Odegaard, now it was Saka. It could be that they are taking turns this season. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Martinelli didn't return, but uh, he did have a few good opportunities, I thought, in the first half. So I'm still a bit reluctant to sell him. But if I need to pick one in my midfield to sell, it might be Martinelli. So that could be the dilemma this week. Uh, Man United, I already mentioned it before, 0-2 down against Forest. But then they did what we call in Spanish a remontada. <laughs> they managed uh, to come back and win a 3-2. 
And uh, for everybody who kept faith in, in Bruno and Rashford, I think, yeah, we got uh, rewarded. Rashford playing from the left much better than what he did when he was on the number nine. Um, and uh, yeah, Bruno very involved. So so that's good. And as mentioned before, Nottingham, you know, credits to them, uh, especially Awaniji, he keeps scoring goals. So, you know, they're quite a good team, not so easy to beat. So that's something also we should consider going forward. And then, yeah, just quickly covering a few other teams. Uh, Brighton were beaten by West Ham, but I mentioned already earlier, you know, Brighton, they did have a lot of opportunities. I think West Ham just had a really smart uh, game plan. Uh, Ward Prowse, someone to keep in mind for the Hammers. They also now bought Kudus from Ajax and in FPL, he's listed as a midfielder for six and a half million. Mm -hmm. uh, at Ajax, actually, he was an attacker, he was, uh, mostly a winger or number nine. So uh, again, let's see where he will play, but he could be uh, someone also that could come into, into the picture later on. Uh, Villa beat Burnley, so also Villa doing well. Uh, two goals from Matty Cash, someone also to keep an eye on. City struggled with Sheffield and Haaland showed us that he can also miss penalties. <laughs> you know, he is human. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he scored a goal later. And I think what was interesting to see there, like with KDB out and Foden on the bench, because he was sick during the week, uh, they were really lacking some creativity. Um, so I think that could be positive for the Foden owners, that uh, Foden could be really the man for City uh, for the next couple of game weeks. But yeah, again, with Pep, you never know. Yeah. Um, and to finish, Newcastle versus Liverpool, a great game. And Newcastle looked really strong and comfortable, but then at the end, they still lost it. So yeah, credits to Liverpool for, uh, you know, they kept going. Darwin Nunez with two great goals. So this could be a confidence boost for him. Should keep an eye on him. Uh, yeah, as I said before, Jota was benched. So that shows again how risky it is to go for a Liverpool attacker. And again, the de defense looked quite leaky. Um, I think we could still go for the Newcastle defense, though, going forward. Uh, the fixtures get more favorable. But also, uh, do, there to keep in mind or to consider which players you want to own, because also the attackers look quite good with, with Isaac, but also Almiron, who is playing again uh, in the starting lineup. And also Gordon, who's now yeah. scored a goal. So plenty of options to consider. So yeah, that was a bit of a longer eye test report. I had some time to see most of the games. I uh, hope you find it useful. Uh, did I mention anything new to you, Sir Top, or anything you want to comment on? Yeah, one thing that made me think is for them, actually. Uh, you mentioned yeah. that they lack creativity and then he might be a key player. Yeah. We will talk about our teams, but... I also have Richardson in the midfield, which I want to replace. Right. Yeah. So that's why I'm a little bit looking for the, you know, good midfielders that I can bet on. And I also yeah. usually carry a deeper bench than most people. Um, okay. Well, analytics players usually right. think they have better yeah. bench players. So I yeah. feel like I can take some risk, but at the same time, though I want to play the, you know, pep game, I probably don't. So let's see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they have a really good fixture as well at home against Fulham. And we know that City, uh, you know, they, can, they do well usually at home. Um, so I think it could be one to bet on. But uh, yeah. yeah, up to everyone to consider. Um, all right, talking about that and talking about uh, game week four, let's look at the optimal team. Yeah, sure. Let me share it again. So I used a custom weight ensemble. I combined <coughs> four models. I use FPR review, Mikael Tokwam's transfer algorithm, fantasy football scout, and fantasy football hubs models. Yeah. Um, with a custom ratio. And so for the next eight game weeks, so this is the current optimal wildcard team. Um, and just like last game week, I sold this model with transfers planned just to see right. you know, what it does yeah so <clears throat> in goal we have flacken and in the bench as a bench goalkeeper we have leno but they kind of rotate through right uh, because if if you rotate them they are very favorable uh, you get lots of good fixtures right uh in defense we have henry and then chilwell 
and Ruben Diaz. Yeah. In midfield, we have Saka, Mubemo, Sterling, Madison, Son. Okay. And in forward, we have Jackson and Holland. And in yeah. bench, we have Trippi and Botman. It was the case last game week too. So the model wants to keep Newcastle defenders in the bench until they, right. they are ready to play. Yeah. And so one interesting thing here is Sterling stays through the horizon. So I think okay. model has more confidence in him now. Right. Okay. Doesn't rotate him. Uh, yeah. It rotates, however, like it, it starts with Son, but only for two game weeks and then goes to Fernandez and then goes to Salah after like four game weeks. Uh, oh, okay. And yeah. Saka is also gets replaced um, oh. uh, in the horizon. And Chilwell is replaced by Cash after five game weeks. And finally, right. Diaz is replaced by Shar after three game weeks. So as we mentioned, Model tries to have that triple Newcastle defense. Um, wow. Okay. So that it starts with Diaz. But Diaz starts, uh, plays against Fulham and skips the West Ham game and then plays against Nottingham Forest and then gets replaced by Shar, which has more favorable fixtures in the horizon. Yeah. But yeah, this is the optimal team. Do you have any comments on it? Um, no, I mean, it's interesting that it's already picking up Sterling from, uh, you know, because so far, especially <laughs> last game week, uh, he did really well. And I think Sterling is also quite cheap. He, he was 7 million. I think now he's 7.1. So, you know, it's a good option to to bring into the team. It's interesting that it, the model keeps fate in Son. As so far, uh, he didn't do much yet, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, you, you know, it could still change. And indeed, what you mentioned, going for three Newcastle defenders is an interesting one because I think uh, personally, I'm thinking to have two and then try to bring in Isaac. But yeah, still need to think a bit more about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, people are also bringing. Uh, like Tottenham defenders too. I mean, right. in general, but looks like yeah. Model prefers to have uh, like offense players from Tottenham and then defense players from Newcastle for the you know upcoming horizon. Yeah. I mean, in case of Chelsea, uh, for example, you have both like defenders and and then midfielders yeah. and forwards, but that's not the case for some teams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and maybe also to mention for Spurs, they really have some, some two nice upcoming fixtures now with Burnley and Sheffield. So I think uh, for for people like <laughs> myself, <laughs> I don't have any Spurs players. Uh, I'm a bit worried about that, especially not owning Madison. So again, I mentioned it earlier, I think the dilemma will be which midfielder to go for. And uh, yeah, maybe I can talk a little bit about that because you know I have uh, four midfielders from Arsenal and United combined mm -hmm. and they play against each other so I think we can expect an open game so I don't mind too much to have four um, and you know out of uh, Bruno Rashford Saka and Martinelli I think the only one I would consider selling is Martinelli but uh, at the same time I also feel like he can he could still return in any game it's a bit of trauma from last year I had Martinelli, and any every time I put him on the bench, he was scoring goals. So I was kind <laughs> of like, you know, I feel like I, I need to keep Martinelli. Um, but uh, yeah, if I, if I'm a bit worried that I don't have Madison, and I also would like to have Foden, so I need to pick one of them. But then I need to sell one, so I don't know yet uh, who to sell. So that that's again, as I said, the the dilemma. And to make it a little bit more difficult, my plan was to. Uh, find half a million to add to my bank account because mm -hmm. next game week I want to bring in Trippier. So if I want to do that, then, uh, you know, and I sell Martinelli who's at 8 million, I cannot go to Madison or Foden because oh, then, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I won't, I won't find that half a million. So one thing I could do is bring in Graylish who is okay. at 7 .4 million. <laughs> But yeah, that's a bit, you know, <laughs> he's not mentioned often in, as an FPL option, but, you know, he, he is quite, uh, you know, quite a certain player in, in, in Pep's system now. And uh, he did deliver an assist, but yeah, it feels a bit risky to go there. And the other option, it could be to go for uh, uh, Mubemo at, at Brentford. So I was happy to see that he was showing up in, in the optimal team. 
because he is, of course, a cheaper option, which would give me some uh, some money in, in the bank. But yeah, maybe I'm overthinking it, and maybe <laughs> maybe I should just focus on on the, the upcoming fixture, uh, which which looks really appealing for both City and uh, and 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 Spurs. But still, have two days to make up my mind, and I probably I will need uh, that time. <laughs> for you, anything uh, you're planning to do? Well, for my team, I mean, as you see, it is. You know, not too far from the optimal team, I should say. Um, right. Obviously, I will try to get the Newcastle defenders, as we mentioned. Mm. I am trying to have the budget for Trippia because uh, with my right. current plan, if I do a replacement like Richardson to Sterling, then I will have the exact money for Trippia down the line, which okay. is very risky because, I mean, people will start buying him it will go right. up in price probably by the point that yeah. you know it's time yeah. to buy him. So yeah. one thing I, I was actually surprised about because you don't see him in many of the teams when you look on Twitter, but his ownership is above thirty percent. It's thirty one percent. So a lot of people already own him. Actually, I didn't. I didn't realize. Yeah. Talking about trip here. Yeah, checking it and in the prime sample. So prime sample is the. Uh, most successful thousand managers by historical okay. finishes. He's owned around thirteen percent, so not right. too much lower. But no, yeah, that's people what I will start yeah. buying him again. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, Sterling would have been fun, but I don't think I will. Uh, I will go there. Um, I will probably find a cheaper midfield replacement, or more likely I will roll. To be honest, um, okay. because I don't see an immediate uh, replacement for anyone, so maybe yeah. waiting for for one more game week. Uh, yeah. Even though, like in terms of expected value, I will be losing some. That you know, with a single move to Sterling, for example, I could bring more expected value, but then um, I will be forced yeah. to lose expected value in the long run. So I right. might prefer to roll this game week to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also an option for me, which I didn't mention. But you know, we're going into an international break after this uh, game week four, so mm -hmm. it's always good to act to free transfers. So that's that's also still something I can consider. So uh, yeah, sounds like we need uh, the next two couple two two days to uh, to make some decisions there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, final topic for today, as usual. Let's look at the captaincy options. And I suppose we can give Haaland the armband again. Yeah, Haaland is clear. His expected value in the ensemble model, that's the you know equal weighted average of all models. Yeah. His expected value is 8.34. And the next uh, closest option is Salah with 6.55. So, I mean... He's almost two expected value higher, 1.8. So uh, okay. he is comfortably the best analytics pick for the game week. Um, yeah. The only model who has Salah ahead of others is Fantasy Football Hub. Um, but I'm not sure because I don't see Holland's in the top five options. Maybe no. I had an error that's, while I was you know, getting the values. but. Yeah, Salah is at the first place, and then they have Foden in the second place, actually. Right. Um, yeah. If you are looking for some you know, exciting options, we have Mubemo in the third place with 5.8. And yeah. we have Foden against Fulham at 5.5. And then Jackson is against Nottingham Forest at 5.3. Are the other captaincy okay. options from the models. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will go for Haaland again. <laughs> <laughs> just a place even though uh you know he hasn't uh scored any hat tricks yet this season but uh yeah it, it can happen every week with him right i don't i just don't want to bet against it yeah 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 i mean mm. one one funny thing is this so with everyone almost having the same set of players uh right. and also like playing safe with the captaincy after last year's disaster for you know differential yeah. captaincy picks this yeah. season pre people are pretty uh, like risk averse in general. Even in right. our min like uh, work mini league, I used to see different captains from like everyone. Nowadays, yeah. it's not the case. I mean, 
usually the good players or people who are paying attention like you and me yeah. um if you always go with the you know the obvious best obvious option like Holland but yeah. i still see some people who are picking you know totally different captains and then they get points i actually yeah. get happy for them because i mean it's yeah definitely it sounds more exciting yeah. i don't have the courage to to you know just to pick a captain just to pick a differential captain but yeah i mean it's good for people who are trying this kind of stuff it, it no, sounds definitely. more fun and i think uh for the first three game weeks you know if you pick the right captain like maybe sterling last game week or uh, Mitoma the week before, then uh, yeah, you you had a head start. Huh? You 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 made some gain over all of the Haaland uh, captainers. But I mean, I decided for this season, especially for the start, to take it a bit uh, more careful. I just wanted to try and stay with mm-hmm. the field because uh, last year I didn't, and then you know you kind of uh, ruin your season already in the first game week. So uh, I tried to stay a bit closer to the field, uh, and then yeah, we'll see how it goes later on. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. We got burned so much last season yeah. that we are playing very, <laughs> very safe this season. Possibly yeah, man. Oh, that was terrible. I didn't own Haaland at the start and you know he kept scoring hat tricks. That was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> he did. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um I think we can wrap it up again for this week. Anything mm-hmm. you still wanted to add? No, nothing from my side. Okay, cool. Thanks again for preparing all the charts. And again, before we close it, we'll give a shout out to the mini league leaders. Uh, the number of teams in the league went up again. So now we have 221 teams. So that's pretty cool. And you can still join it. Uh, the code is 0JSDLA. So 0JSDLA. And we have a new leader again. It's Alex Wilmot with his team Are You Not Entertained? He has a total score of 214 points. Yeah, it's a good team name. Uh, and number two is last week's leader. It's Darak Nguyen. Oh, I said Darak again. My buddy Keen told me that it's a silent G. Sorry, Darak. So I should say Dara, I think. I hope uh, I pronounced it better. <laughs> Thanks, Keen, for giving me that uh, feedback. <laughs> Um, his team pass offer receive is just one point behind the leader with a total score of 213 points and then there is another one point gap with the number three and that's HP Van Dorn with his team Torn Fighters on 212 points so they're doing pretty well and uh, yeah we have an exciting mini league yeah. thanks for joining us and uh, we'll keep an eye on it and sir tub and i we hope to make the top three at some point as well <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> all right everyone this was fpl optimized podcast episode number 55 thanks for listening uh there will be an international break coming up so we need to see what we will do next week please subscribe to our podcast so you will get notified when the next episode is released and do follow us on Twitter or now called X for Surtop. It's at Surtop below. And for me, it's at Belfi BB. And leaving it again to Surtop to close. Until next time, stay curious and stay analytical. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.